It is springtime, and springtime also means that a lot of people start heading out to the garden to plant flowers and look pretty. But if you don't have a lawn, or maybe you're still trying to work on your green thumb, you want to start with just one project, we have got the answer. Heather Sherwood is here from the Chicago Botanic Garden. She's the senior horticulturist. Hello and welcome, Miss Heather. Hi, thanks so, for having me. Oh, no problem. So we're going to start with this window box, and these are yeah. also things that you can put on your balcony. Yep, on your balcony, hang them off the edge, put them right on the ledge. Um, they've been around for years. Mm -hmm. This one I've had for two years now and this is what I have for the spring to plant into a lot of the soil has dropped down a little bit so oh, so you just leave this from the year before oh, you yeah, just leave just it take out right the plants outside. okay cool you know I cut them back so that the roots are all rotten uh -huh. now and so basically the first thing that we're gonna do is kind of just rough up the soil okay in here. let me Come get on. my hands yeah, in here exactly all right and so what does this do kind of put the air back exactly in it? Okay. It aerates the soil and it just makes it easier planting when oh, you want okay to yeah plant it very cool and also over time the soil kind of dissipates as mm -hmm. the plants eat it oh um, so plants eat soil they decompose it over time slowly so the soil actually shrinks okay so you know now that I do not have a green thumb. <laughs> all right so now first question that I always have with these is how many plants would I put you have a lot of stuff out here all of these will fit in here and not choke each other out no I recommend on this is a 24 inch container mm -hmm. and roughly four to six plants but it depends on the type of plant okay like this beautiful blue lobelia it's a uh -huh. weeping draping one so it's not oh. actually gonna sit into the uh -huh. flower bed here and this one is the potato vine. It drapes These are down. so pretty. These are the ones that turn like right, almost lime greenish. Yep, bright, in bright the summertime. Green. Great. Yeah, and I like bold colors on mm -hmm. planter boxes. Usually, you're viewing them from far distance, so bolder colors mm -hmm. have a tendency to work a little bit better for Very me. Very nice. Now, what's the secret here? Uh, is fertilizer necessary? And if so, what kind? Yes, I prefer slow release fertilizer because okay. um, I'm not going to lie, I'm a little bit lazy on the gardening yes. and Yay, I always Heather. forget to fertilize. And so that's this. That's yeah. These little beads. You sprinkle it in here. Read the directions on the pack. Package. And so just the whole thing, just want me to yeah, put it on top? Yeah, okay. put it on top, and that way it gets mixed Whoops. into the soil as uh -huh. well. And so that's the first step you do before you, you plant the plants. Yeah, because okay. I like to then mix it into the soil. I see, so it gets all the way down. Yeah, so and how plants, often do you put this in there? Um, you have to read the directions on the bags, okay. but um, two to three times a year is what okay. I would recommend. Uh -huh. Spring, summer, and fall, this being springtime right now. Okay, great. Now, when we're planting things, I always have issues with my, my stuff because like the little edges of the plant start turning black. Yeah. What am I doing wrong? That's water, actually, or okay. it's either too much at one given time time and mm -hmm. then it goes to the other extreme of too dry and okay. that's when you get a lot of margin burn on the uh -huh. leaves and that's what it's called. Great. Um, even moisture is the best thing that you can mm -hmm. try and do. It's you know a planter box up on an east balcony or western balcony is kind of like a baby you cool. got to kind of maintain it and keep it going. Now this is going to sound like a stupid question. I take this out of here oh, and yeah. put this in here right? And okay. what you want to look for when you're selecting the plants uh -huh. is nice big healthy roots. Okay. Not necessarily wrapping around the plot uh, the root system mm -hmm. here. But um, white, they don't smell bad. That's a big no-no. Don't okay. buy a plant. Because that, that means it's probably dying. It's rotting okay. out. Something's happened to it. Um, and then basically what you're going to want to do is find your soil level in here. I like personally to start with the middle plant okay. best. This is um, a plant called Phygelus or Cape Fuchsia. I like them because they're so cute. Yeah, and it gets fairly tall, about two and a half feet. So, so that way you balance. Out. So I'll take that out. Now, you yeah. know what? We probably are going to run out of some time soon. What's one last tip that you have for people about keeping it up over the summer? You know, make sure that it has, uh, that you groom it, that you take the spent flower heads off. Oh, the ones that are dying? Yeah, okay. or any yellowing leaves because you don't want those in there. Okay. Make sure to keep up the watering and definitely also the fertilization with the uh, slow release fertilizer. You make it so sound often. so easy, Heather. Maybe I won't kill my plants this you year. You won't. Okay. I'm going to for definitely follow your little tricks to the and I don't break this up. I just put it in there like so. You can so. scrunch it just a okay. little bit. It helps the root system grow into okay. the new container that it's in. And I'm going to keep the plastic so I remember what to do with it. <laughs> and that's what I do too. <laughs> if you need any information, we are just scratching the surface. To find out more either about the Chicago Chicago Botanic Garden, you can log on to wciu.com and they also have a Bloomin' Festival coming up May 14th through the 16th. There's a number to call and we are not done with Heather and all the gardening experting. We will have more from her coming up at 8 on how to do some other things that you might like to do with your planting. She is the senior horticulturist at the Chicago Botanic Garden. Heather, hello. Hi, how are you? Good. You're cut, so you're repairing my not-so-green thumb. Yes, we're going to try to do our best. <laughs> We've already done the window guard, uh, window boxes. Yeah. Now you've got the little hanging baskets, which I think are so cute. Yeah. What is this stuff? This is a moss liner, uh -huh. um, and you can buy it at the store. If you're recycling pots from last year, you can buy this and make a beautiful hanging basket. 
with it. And that's what I was going to show you today. Okay, great. What's the trick? Like overall, if we're going to do hanging baskets, what's the one thing people always screw up with this stuff? Um, making sure that you have a water reservoir in the bottom of the pot somewhere mm -hmm. is a big plus. And that's like exactly what, yeah, okay. this is a pot that I used last year. Mm -hmm. And all I did was pop off the bottom of it and I'm going to stick it in the bottom of the container. And what this does is allow a little bit of water, but not too much water mm -hmm. to be stored for the plants to use up over time. Does the moss hold on to the water as well? I've always assumed that, but I don't know if that's it it does hold a lot of water, but in our windy city, it, you know, <laughs> yeah. it, it decimates it pretty quickly, and that's what the bottom plastic for. You could also use like a plastic bag liner at the bottom of the pot mm -hmm. um, to help keep a little water in there too. Okay. Also, regular watering is just really important on baskets. We are the windy city, so hanging baskets have exposure on all sides, and so they're going to need a little bit more water. Okay. Now, as far as sun exposure and things like that, what, what do you have to be concerned with with something that kind of spins around in the wind? Yeah, you um, well. First off, the wind usually doesn't turn the containers oh, okay. too much, but you need to turn the container so that it gets full sun around it. Oh. There are little hooks that have solar pa panels on them nowadays uh -huh. that turn naturally. Get out. Oh, they're wonderful. Oh, At wow. garden centers, you can find them. Uh -huh. um, but here we're just going to talk about a normal sun one, maybe an eastern or western exposure. Okay. Um, and today I brought with me a little bit of a Calibra color or also oh. million bells, it's cute so little teeny tiny petunia. Uh -huh. And that's what it's going to be. Um, I'm going to put these on the side of the basket here. Oh. And to start that, I take my fun little pruners and I just cut a little slit in the side of the basket. I'm so not creative because I would have never thought about planting something that, that would hang outside the basket. I would think you would have to build it up. But that makes it really heavy? It makes it really full around the sides. I these see. little petunias here grow in kind of all directions. And you can see it's a little bit of a weeper or a sideways <sighs> planted. So what I'm going to do is find that hole again. That, uh -huh. oh, here it is. It right here, I believe. Right there. Uh huh. And cool. so I always go from the inside, put the plant on the inside, the, and the gently. flowers through the outside. Oh, yep. check you out. And this gives you kind of like an instant basket. Put ah. two or three of these around. And then they start to flow down, and so uh -huh. you never see the actual basket. I'm loving that. Yeah. Now, Especially when you think of this as being almost at eye level, uh -huh. and hanging out somewhere, you want to you know, hide the sides a little bit. Very, very cool. Well, thank you for the tips. I'm going to let you continue doing yeah. that. And maybe I can um, take it home with me. Hey. <laughs> For sure. And uh, if you need any other information about the Chicago Botanic Garden, you can go to a Bloomin' Festival, actually, and check them out this weekend, May 14th through the 16th. And uh, they have great tips there, and you can get some great ideas. And if you want to see what we actually did this morning, if we went too fast for you, you can try for it yourself. Uh, head over to WCIU.com for that as well to check it out. Thanks again to our friends from the Chicago Botanic Garden for bringing these lovely flowers. Don't they make your day nice? They make mine nice. I think I'm going to steal that one and take it home. <laughs> I'm almost done.